Hi! Welcome to my channel, Heart Disease Diaries. My name is Nicole. Today I wanted to share with you some very important tips if you are taking Coumadin. I have been taking Coumadin for years. I first started taking it when I was seven after a blood clot, after my first open heart surgery. And then I started to take it again long term after my first ischemic stroke in 2013. And then my INR range changed after my fourth open heart surgery with a titanium mitral valve replacement. So I am on this medication for the long haul and I wanna share with you some really important things if you are taking Coumadin. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around, but before I get into it, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and pass this video along to anybody that you think it might be helpful to. Thanks so much. Myself wondering what did happen to the last ten? I ran away with my life, fast forward, never turn back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it. Take Coumadin, you are probably aware that it is a very dangerous medication and also very necessary and it is highly regulated, which is super important. So it's regulated by getting your blood drawn through and what they call an INR. So that kind of tells them how quickly your blood is clotting. Every person gets a different sort of what they call an INR range. And my range is 2.5 to 3.5. That is considered the safe range for me. You know, the way that your INR is affected is really through diet and so what you consume, what you eat, what you drink, and medications, vitamins, teas, coffees, things like that. So let me share some tips with you. So the first thing that I really, really want to emphasize is when I got these first set of small recurrent strokes in 2020. I called the company that makes my artificial heart valve. I told them the situation and one of the people that worked there told me that anticoagulant variability or an INR that is inconsistent is more dangerous than having an INR be high all the time or low all the time. And that really stuck with me. So trying to make sure that you keep your INR in range by taking your medication as prescribed. Another thing to do is to try to maintain you know, a balanced diet and eat the same types of vegetables and fruits or things with vitamin K consistently. So for example, if you eat a salad once a week, continue eating it once a week. And if you start to eat a salad every day or you binge eat on spinach and you never eat spinach, that's really gonna throw off your numbers and make your INR go way down. So if you do start to eat things that you normally wouldn't, just let your anticoagulant management team know. Another thing that I would recommend is just familiarizing yourself with vitamin K in certain foods. So at least knowing what foods are really gonna throw off that number. I think that it's pretty common knowledge if you take the medication that leafy greens like spinach, kale, broccoli, asparagus, Brussels sprouts are really high in vitamin K. And it's also important to know what affects it on the other end, that strawberries or berries or chocolate or alcohol or ginger can really affect it as well. So knowing what the major interactors are and if you are going to consume them, just eat them on a regular basis so that your numbers kind of stay in range and don't fluctuate. Um, I would also say try to eat a lot of foods. Try to eat fruits and vegetables that are low in vitamin K. That way you can get a balance of your other vitamins and nutrients. So I used to love just eating handfuls of spinach and blending them up in a smoothie. But now that I'm on Coumadin, I don't drink green tea and I don't eat broccoli or spinach anymore, sadly. Um, but instead, I eat cauliflower, I eat carrots, I eat cucumbers, I eat radishes. And, and I eat bell peppers, green onions. You know, I've kind of swapped those out for the spinach and the kale. Another really important thing is to be very careful of any sort of injury, especially any head injury. The reason is your blood is a lot thinner and it 
it does clot, but it's going to take a lot longer to clot, hence the INR that tells you how long it's gonna to take to clot. And so you are more susceptible to bleeding and to bruising. Um, and I think, so making sure that you are not, you know, if you are an athletic person, making sure to not do any sports that might injure your head or your face. So like your MMA career might have to go. Um, or, you know, even, just making sure even if you go out in public that you know you're not going to get hit in the head with something or anything like that because it's very dangerous another thing i would highly recommend to check your body regularly like before you get in the shower or maybe out of the shower to just make sure that you don't have any new bruising or swelling that maybe you didn't notice before I have been taking this medication for a long time as I said a couple times earlier and I will tell you being on Coumadin I have had bruises in places I did not know you could get bruises. I've had a bruise on my eyelid from crying really hard. I've had a bruise, you know, here. I actually have a bruise on my finger right now. I don't even know how I got that. I've had bruises on my toes, you know, I've and I've had really, really big bruises that stayed for a long time. But it's really important to just take notice of your body and, and look at for any sort of, you know, aberrations. Like if it's not normal for you to have a bunch of bruises or bleeding like call your doctor this could be an indication that your INR might be really off um, if you for if you God forbid are cutting vegetables or you get hit or something or you can't stop bleeding or you're shaving your legs or your face and you can't and you cut yourself and you can't stop bleeding go to the emergency room another thing i would highly recommend is to take your coumadin at the same time each day i really do think that this makes a really big difference it's also going to help you be on a routine to not forget any dose another thing i would recommend is to have a pill box they're super cheap and affordable and they're really really convenient especially in managing coumadin a drug that you may not take the same dose every day I think my, my pill box is so helpful because I take a blood thinner in the morning and then I take Coumadin in the evening. So it helps me know if I took it and remember to take it. So please get a pill box. Another thing I would recommend is to not take unnecessary vitamin supplements or teas. We have all these vitamins that have all these really radical promises like i'll give it'll give you lustrous beautiful hair and glowing skin and while glowing skin and lustrous hair are things that are you know pretty cool to have some vitamins are just not efficacious or bioavailable and so and what they do though what they are really good at is really interacting with the coumadin so if you don't have a vitamin deficiency and your doctor doesn't recommend you taking a certain multivitamin but you want to because it promises all these benefits just really think about that because it's expensive these multivitamins are expensive and chances are they probably do interact with the coumadin in the same vein be careful about any sort of teas um, or sort of like herbal remedies like garlic or cinnamon or turmeric um, or even green tea or ginger tea all of those things while they're really great for people that aren't on coumadin they can really interact with coumadin and affect your INR and the last thing I would recommend is to just make sure to get your INR checked regularly you know don't forget don't forget to do it don't put it off just make sure that you're getting it checked consistently and that you're staying in range so i hope that this information was helpful for you i know that in when i first started taking coumadin i was so overwhelmed and i'm not the type of person that like meal preps or plans my meals out in advance um, I kind of eat whatever sounds good or what's on sale at the grocery store, but with Coumadin, you just have to have a little bit more preparation and knowledge about how the medication works and what foods contain vitamin K. So thank you so much for watching. I wish you the best of luck. Have a good day.